Welcome back to the lab folks. So what we're going to do today is we're going to test some of this AliExpress electronics that we recently got. So I'm going to test these batteries here for their capacity. They're rated at 2000 milliamp hours. We're going to test that. And we're going to test these uh, PD decoys. So I'm going to try them out the different voltages here on them. Make sure that they do what they're supposed to do. And I'm going to test these little boost converters here. So we've got a 5 volt, a 9 volt, and a 12 volt. We'll test all three of those out to see if they got fairly accurate voltages coming out of them. And I'm going to take this for a little test drive too. So I'll be using this to look at all the different voltages that we got here today. To get started, I'm going to start charging these. I'll charge these up to 4.2 volts. And I'll, let the, I'll start the charge current at 500 milliamps and I'll let it get down to about 50 or 20 milliamps. And I'll consider that to be fully charged and then I'll put it on the little load which I've shown you before and we'll run it down to about three volts because it's a lithium polymer battery I think at that amperage three volts is probably okay it should bounce back up then to 3.2 or thereabouts after it shuts off and that'll protect the the battery lithium lithium polymers don't like it when you take them down too low they're not like lithium ion which can go down to like 2.6 2.7 volts these don't like to go down that low so let's get started with that. I'm going to just use these little uh, DuPont wires here and we'll stick them into the connector here. Okay, let's, uh, let's measure the voltage as we see it now. 3.9 volts as they stand. That's a good storage level there. 3.8, 3.7, in around that area is a good lithium polymer storage voltage. So before we connect this up to the battery, I just want to make sure we've got 4.2 volts available right here. And it looks like we got 4.198. Let's just trim that up to 4.2 volts. We'll hook that up now and let it charge away. We'll hook up a USB cable to this and see how it does. Okay, if you look at the back of it here, it's got a little legend on, on how to set the voltages up. So switch one, switch two, and switch three. So 110 is five volts, and then all the way up to 011 should be 20 volts. Uh, right now, currently, uh, all three switches are turned off and I don't know what that's supposed to give you. Maybe it gives you nothing out. But anyway, let's have a look at that. All right, I have this 65 watt Lenovo power brick here and it is capable of PD, uh, but it doesn't have all the voltages that this will select. This has got 5, 9, 15 and 20, but it doesn't have 12. So I'm interested to see what comes up if I select 12 in here, what voltage comes up? I, I would guess it's either going to be 9 or 15. 9 would be preferable. Let's plug it in and let's see how it goes here. So I've got it set up for 5 volts. And it looks like things are operating. Let's get our little uh, pencil meter here and check the voltage. We're showing 4.99. Let's try the 9 volt range, which is uh, all on. Nine point one one, good enough for me. Let's try the twelve volt range now. That's the middle one off. This is the one I'm dying to see what's going to come out. Ah, fifteen volts. Okay, I gather the fifteen volts is also going to show us fifteen volts. That is uh, all off except for the last one, S three on, and the other two off. Sure enough. And then we try 20 volt range, which is uh, switch two and three on. There we go, 20.29. So okay, so it's pretty tight tolerance, I think. It's fairly good enough. And we've got a, a decent load on here right now. So 20 volts going to 10 ohms, we're, we're drawing a couple of amps. So that's, uh, that's pretty good. It actually just tells, I guess most of you know this, but this little chip here just sends a signal back along a couple of the lines on the USB-C and it tells it what power to put out. And these pins here are attached directly to the USB power lines coming in. So this little chip here doesn't handle any of the power. It just tells this device here what voltage to output. That thumbs up for this little thing. It, it works fantastically. So let's set up now to test for these little things. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go and go solder some wire to them so that we can check them out. Okay, I think this battery here is completely charged. Let's check on that. So 
go 4.198 that's close enough to 4.2 for me so I'm going to take it off the charge now and I'm going to put it onto the the little load okay so I've got that all set up there it's going to discharge at uh, 0.5 amps so it should take about four hours and we'll have a look then at the milliamp hours that are delivered by the time it uh, completes so let me get that started all right so what I've got here I've got the 5 volt boost converter set up here I'm going to use this to monitor current I've got this set up currently now should give us around about 300 milliamps which is probably typically what I'm going to use this for and we'll turn it up a little bit and I've got an oscilloscope up here let me get it up on the screen for you and I'm ready to go ahead and test this Let's see what kind of noise we're getting out of it and plug it in I'm just going to use this big battery here to put some current through it okay so we've got 300 milliamps and it looks like we have about a volt peak to peak in ripple and RMS of around about 63 millivolts. That should be all right for most of the applications I'll be using this for. Put a little filtering on it, it should be okay. Now let's bring it up, uh, bring it up to, uh, let's say about, about half an amp, see if it gets any worse. No, we're not really any worse. About 0 0.04, 0 0.05 volts more, 68 RMS. Let's bring it up to three quarters of an amp. The RMS value has come up a little bit to 73, but the peak to peak is roughly the same. Yeah, it's okay for an inexpensive little boost converter. All right, uh, well, let's try out the 9 volt one. Just let me get that set up and I'll come right back. We've got the 9 volt one set up, and uh, let's just make sure we are getting 9 volts. So we should be getting 9 volts um, plus or minus 3%. So let's see what, what we're getting here. Hmm, it's a little high. A little high, but that's okay. 9.25 shouldn't bother too many things. All right, um, about 300 milliamps, we're getting a little bit more peak to peak noise. We're about 1.2 volts. And RMS is actually a little bit less at 59 millivolts. So I don't want to bring this one up too high because uh, I'm going to be drawing a lot of current on the other side of this, on the input side. So let's bring it up to half an amp and see what happens. Peak to peak is still about 1.2 volts. RMS has gone up to about 70 millivolts. Yeah. Just as good as the 5 volt one. So far, so good. Let's, uh, let's connect up the 12 volt one. All right, we've got it all hooked up. Let's, uh, let's plug it in. Got about 250 milliamps going through it, and that's way less. 600 peak to peak, 32 RMS. This one's pretty clean. Let's bring it up. I don't want to bring it up much past 350 milliamps. Again, because the current going in through the device is going to get quite high. And we're still pretty good. 620 millivolts peak to peak, 35, 36 millivolts RMS. Okay, well, we've had pretty good success with everything we got. Just goes to show you that for the price, you're getting pretty good stuff off of AliExpress. It seems to do what it's supposed to do. Let's make sure we're getting 12 volts out of this. So it should be plus or minus 3%. We are within spec perfectly. Okay, very good. As I clean up here, I should notice that the way I had this all hooked up, any noise on this would be hugely exaggerated by the big inductive loops of wire and stuff here. So the actual noise on these things is probably going to be a heck of a lot less. And I just wanted to do a, a quick little test of it. So yeah, quick and dirty. And the batteries are still working. Okay, we've done uh, about two hours and 40 minutes and we're at 1.34 amp hours. It's heading in the right direction. So we've got another hour and 20 minutes to go. So basically uh, half that again. So that will be 2000 milliamp hours. But uh, we'll let it run through and uh, I'll come back and make a quick note of that before we sign off. Okay, folks. So there the battery has finally kicked off there. So it did uh, pop up to 3.27 volts after kicking off at 3 volts and discharging at a half an amp for 3 hours, 39 minutes and 40 seconds. And it gave us back 1,833 milliamp hours. Okay, I think that's pretty close. 
I'm not dissatisfied with that at all. Uh, this is the first cycle on the battery and it'll probably improve with a couple more cycles. I think that's pretty good. All right then, so that's it. Uh, I hope you got something out of the video today, folks. We did get uh, quite a bit of success with our inexpensive AliExpress purchases. They all seem to work uh, pretty close to advertised, so I'm quite happy with that. Thanks a lot for coming out, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye now.